It's historic in a couple of ways. Number one, because it, uh, has, a, it has embodied a norm uh, laid down by the Council that the use of chemical weapons by anyone anywhere uh, constitutes a threat to international peace and security. Um, it has um, achieved unity in the Council, which, we, which has eluded us for the last couple of years on Syrian issues. Um, and it has laid out a very firm basis, enforceable basis, uh, for disposing of um, serious chemical weapons stockpiles. And it's important because it's coming at a critical stage. The key decision uh, which is articulated on Chapter 7 says that the Council decides that in the event of non-compliance, um, measures will be taken. Now, of course, the question is what those measures would be, but it already has said in the resolution, we've already decided that if non-compliance, we will take action, we will take measures. Um, obviously, we'd need to have a uh, you know, discussion within the Council on precisely what those measures would be. I think that is a fairly high level of enforceability. Somalia. Um, Every member of the Council has repeatedly placed a great deal of importance, of course, on achieving an early meeting of Geneva II. We all know what the realities and difficulties have been in structuring that meeting and then deciding dates. Um, uh, there is a new commitment, I think, after the meeting last Friday evening before adoption of the resolution on chemical weapons, the meeting between the P5, uh, Special Envoy Brahimi and the Secretary General, where the Secretary General made clear his aim uh, to convene the meeting by mid-November and all the actions are going on for that.